Imagine, if you will, waking up in the middle of the night, looking at your blinds and seeing a set of eyes peering at you from the dark. Now imagine that same set of eyes looking at you from just above your bed. Hello, true crimers. It's time for another spooky Saturday. And this is gonna be a kind of a short video. And this is the story of the Cape Intruder of Maine. Creeper Peeper Toms have been around for probably a long time, I'm sure. Gross men, and sometimes the ladies, try to sneak a peek of something not so nice through a window or a peephole or some sort of hole. Ugh. And usually it's something uh, sexual in nature is why they do it, because they're gross. We also have grown accustomed, I guess you can say, kind of, to Home intruders, home invasions, right? There's been stories in recent memory where people, because nowadays everyone has cameras in their house, people have checked their camera footage the following day because they just felt something was off about last night. And there are images on the internet where people have spotted home intruders peering over them as they slept in bed, maybe peered over them as the person fell asleep on their couch. Some of these men have been caught. Some of them have not. One of the ones who have not been caught, well, he was from Maine. This particular event happened in Cape Elizabeth in Maine. It's one of those little seaside towns, right? With everything feels so homey and, and down to earth and everyone knows everyone. You got beaches, you got beautiful imagery. You got it all. But what you're not expecting is a creeper. It started in 2005. One night, a woman had fallen asleep in her bed. She lived alone. She had no kids. She had no one staying with her. She woke up with an uneasy feeling. Standing above her bed was a shadow. Was it a ghost? Was it a full body apparition of a spirit who died years ago? Nope. It was a fully living man. He appeared to be wearing a hoodie. She can kind of see his face, and he was just there staring at her, standing directly over her bed, staring, breathing heavily, watching her sleep. But when he noticed that she woke up, the man bolted. He took off. The woman immediately calls 911. What the hell? Someone's broken into my home. Maybe he was going to assault me. I don't know. Police arrive. They dust for fingerprints. They ask her if anything was stolen. Nothing was taken. Not even, you know, uh, clothing items that say maybe someone like this may have tried to steal. There wasn't even any forced entry in her house. This person entered just through an unlocked door or an unlocked window. This is a community where everyone considers it to be, you know, a safe place to be. And sometimes people just forget in communities like that to lock their doors. A couple of nights later, another woman who lives alone, sound asleep in her bed. She hears some rustling kind of makes her wake up. Her eyes sort of groggily open. That's not even a word, Mike. Well, it is now. She was in such a, a deep sleep that it's like painful to open her eyes, right? And so as she's rubbing her eyes and looking up, she begins to see something standing at the foot of her bed, looking down at her. It's a man. He's motionless and just standing, staring, breathing. She reacts by screaming. The man takes off. 911 called again. No fingerprints. Nothing stolen. No forced entry. Must have entered through an unlocked door or window. And then it happened again a few nights later. Then it happened again the next night. And then again. And then again. And then again. People were locking their doors now. People were locking their windows. Fear spread across the community. What does this man want? What is he doing? Is he wanting to sexually assault these women? How does he know these women live alone? Who is this man? And they give him this the simple nickname of the Cape Intruder. The communities began to establish neighborhood watches. People would essentially take turns patrolling the streets at night to see if they could catch this man, but he was never caught. 
Some of the women managed to get a good enough look at this man that they were able to give police a description. And when all of the descriptions came in, they were able to come up with a composite drawing. And all of the women agreed that this is pretty much what the man looked like. So this is that composite drawing of that man. They said he was a white male and appeared to be somewhere in his early to maybe mid 20s. When the image surfaced, uh, some people said, I think I know who that is. And so police went to the person who everyone thought it was. But it turns out, I guess it wasn't him. I don't know how they ruled him out, but they ruled him out. All of the accounts the women gave were that just he came in quietly and he was just there, it appeared, just to watch them sleep. Just to stare at them as they tossed and turned in their bed. Not one woman ever said he tried to touch them. He ever tried to jump on top of them. And every time the person woke up, he ran. It appeared he had no intent to be violent. No intent to sexually assault. No attempt to rob, steal, break anything. He just wanted to break into these women's home to stare at them in the middle of the night while they slept. And what makes matters even worse is he likely did this to many, many other women and many other households. We only know about the stories where the women woke up. We don't know if he broke into other homes, sat there and stared for hours on end, and then just left. We don't know if he ever tried to perhaps make physical contact with any other women. Maybe he did and they were very sound sleepers. But then, just as quickly as the entire thing started, and as rapid fire as it seemed to happen, it then just ended. February of 2006 was the last reported incident of the Cape Intruder. And since then, he has not been spotted since. It really does make you wonder when you sleep at night, especially to those of you who live alone, are you truly alone at night? Are all of your doors and windows truly locked? Do you trust your neighbors? Do you trust your friends? Because quite frankly, you never know who could be staring at you as you sleep. But I hope you all have a great night tonight. Have a good uh, sleepy sleeps and uh, try to have pleasant dreams. Just wanted to share this little story with you. Um, so... <laughs> Try not to think it may happen because odds are like, odds are it probably won't happen, but. But that's it for today's video, true crime aronies or true scare aronies or whatever the hell. As usual, if you have tripped, fallen, and stumbled your way into this video, hello, I'm Mike. I normally tell true crime stories. I tell four of them a week here on YouTube. I also tell a few a week over on TikTok. I tell one on Instagram and one on Facebook every week as well. All the links to my socials are in the uh, description below in my link tree. So please subscribe here and follow me everywhere if you like. I would greatly appreciate it. But we will see you for the next true crime video. And again, I hope all of you sleep soundly and peacefully this wonderful evening. Goodbye.